thank you, everyone. Uh, great to be back and to see all of you again. Uh, we met, what, seven, eight months ago about, right? In September, when you first joined the MBA, I talked about cross-cultural communication, global leadership. So this is kind of a nice bookend, follow-up to that. Um, you've been, you know, I look at all the faces, I see difference now, eight months. You all look wiser, more jaded, more professional, and greater people than before. So this is a good follow-up to that first session because now it's focusing on, you're nearing the end of the, the Globus adventure, what to do to, again, survive and thrive in the Japanese workplace. Um, I will talk a bit about my experiences and some things I've learned about how to take the Globus MBA and turn it into a pretty good career in Japan, considering things like Japanese ability, the cultural differences, your professional background, all this stuff. So to begin, I'm going to talk about the big question, right? Now, what is the big question? Well, I'll tell you what the big question is. But the big question probably is why? And how do you get a job in Japan? How do you, as a non-Japanese, flip the Globus MBA, flip your background into a meaningful career? So let's look back <laughs> three years and a bit to when I had a lot less gray hair than I do now, to January 2013. So 46 years old. I'm very honest about this, right, at that time. I had just finished my last MBA courses at Globus. So I had all the credits. I figured I was going to graduate. What to do next is the, is the challenge, right? I had Japanese language proficiency tests, and I still do, N4, right? Out of five, the second lowest from the bottom. So my Japanese skill, not so good, right? My previous work experience was, though, quite extensive, working in the Canadian government for over 22 years. What did I do in the Canadian government? Well. I was working in the Canadian innovation system, helping to develop R&D, startups, innovation in the Canadian ecosystem. Um, typical job of a global employee. I was working in defense R&D, doing business development also from the Canadian government. And my other experience of things like um, diplomacy protocol, working at summits and working international diplomacy, and public outreach. So that's me in January 2010, where I'm kind of where you are now. What am I going to do next? What do I want to do? Well, I want to stay in Japan. I like living in Tokyo. I'm happy here. My family's happy here. So I want to stay here, and I want to get a professional career in Japan. And this is what I'm starting out with. So of course, the question is, doshio, right? What to do? What should I do next at this point? Um, and I think for a lot of you, it's a similar situation. You're, you're getting to the end of your MBA. You have maybe some good work experience inside Japan, but mostly outside Japan. Your Japanese level will vary from um, where I am to maybe much better. The age thing, you know, that was an issue for me as well because in any country, you know, age impacts your likelihood to get employed, right? Most of you are, I shouldn't say most of you, all of you are going to have to worry about the 46-year-old part, but it is a factor as well in Japan. We'll talk about that later. So that's January 2013. Flip forward six months later to July 2013, and I joined RICO, right? And we have some interns, I don't understand, going to RICO this summer. We'll look forward to seeing you there. I started as the global HR program manager at RICO. So within two weeks of the job, they told me I was going to be leading their first global employee survey ever in the company. So doing a survey for 88,000 employees. I basically was, and I still am working on things like corporate cultural change um, in headquarters here in Tokyo, but also throughout the world. And I was some designing some leadership development programs for our, our high potential top talent across RICO globally. So that's a six month gap from finishing the courses at Globus to starting this career at RICO. So the big question is how, right? That's what you all want to know, I think. How was I able to do it? And from how I did it, what can you take away? And what can you apply in your career search here in Japan? Again, I call this talk surviving and thriving in the Japanese workplace. Three years so far, I've been surviving pretty well. Thriving, the jury's still out, but seems to be pretty good so far as well. So. Um, we'll focus on a few things like interning, job search, and once you're in the company, how to know it's the right job for you and how to maximize your chances of success in that. A lot of this is my experience, but some of it is based on the other Globus alumni who've been in, through internships, who've been through the program. So I, get a, I crowdsourced a lot of your um, senpai, a lot of the graduates, alumni from Globus, to get this information to make sure we had a good range of opinions. So how? Everything, as we know, in Globus comes in threes, right? The first step is get self-absorbed. This is the first step to successful career change. The second step, stretch yourself. 
And the third step is make your own luck. Now, I'm hoping one or two of you may think this is familiar because this is basically the, the format for my TEDx talk I gave last year. And why this is relevant is because my TED talk was about making a career pivot from Canadian Defense Department, essentially, to global HR for a Japanese company. And a lot of that is based on my experience here in Globus. So this is the framework. Each of these steps is directly tied to my experience at Globus. So this is actually is extremely relevant for all of you. So the first step, get self-absorbed, right? Everyone says don't be self-absorbed, right? It's bad, no, no, no. I, you have to be self-absorbed to think about the kind of career you want in Japan. Luckily, mo you already have been self-absorbed since you got here because you've all been thinking about your personal mission statement and kokurazashi, of course. You've got some idea about this. And this is what I mean by self-absorbed. Know what is your passion, your mission, what kind of things you want to do with your future career. Really important for helping to decide what to do next and what kind of jobs to look for and also what kind of jobs are a good match for you also. And stretch yourself. So get out of your comfort zone, learn new things. Well, of course, you've all been doing that in the last several months at Globus. So the step one and two, congratulations, you've already done, right? You have some sense of your personal mission. You have definitely stretched yourself by being here and going through the MBA experience. You'll stretch yourself further by going through internships and looking for the job hunt. These are two critical steps that you need to do to figure out how to make the career shift. So from the last several months in Japan, you've got your new perspective, new skills, new network, really important. Because the third step, the making your own luck. Now this is different from being lucky. I don't believe in luck, in a sense. I believe in chance, but there's no such thing as luck. We make our own luck. We put ourselves in the right situations to have things happen to us. And that's what I'm talking about by make your own luck. You really have to take active control of your job search. And you're all doing that now. But what I mean is don't be passive. Don't rely on job search websites. Don't rely on um, people coming to you all the time, you going to other people all the time. You have to be really in control of what you want to do based on your personal mission statement, based on your skill set, finding the jobs that match you for that. And also, cannot underestimate enough the importance of volunteering for things, of raising your hand, both before your internship and during your internship and after your internship. I'm going to talk about how this has been really helpful for me in getting my current job um, at RICO and some other opportunities too. And, of course, shine. Get noticed. You have to show everyone what you're capable of. Right? CVs, resumes, portfolios are all great, but the, at the end of the day, in my experience and others, you have to sh really show people what you're capable of. The internship would be a great opportunity for you to do that, but don't limit yourself to just the internship. There's other ways you can show yourself, show what you're capable of and shine and get noticed by others. Jack Welch, good quote, control your own destiny or somebody else will. That's the point, right? Do not be passive. Do not be controlled by others in your job search. Take a very active driving role in developing your future career. But I want to focus mostly on this making your own luck aspect and how I put myself in a situation to get hired by RICO based on what I have here at Globus, my own experience, and so about the commonalities that you have. So what in, oh, I can't remember when. Luckily, we have two of the key players here, Kenya and, and uh, Sayaka. Thank you both of you as well for your help here as well. In the fall of 2012, asked us, um, some of our the other MB students, would you be interested in doing English Cafe at RICO? And that was essentially going to, to RICO and some other companies, but we'll focus on RICO today, and talking to their staff about working globally in English. And so, again, key thing, raise your hand. Yes, I had no reason to say no. Sounds interesting. Why not do it? So I joined, and I went to several events at RICO where we met the RICO employees. Um, I gave them talks about things like doing presentations in English, facilitating meetings in English, basically business skill focused in English. It was really fun. I had a really good impression of the, um, the people at RICO, which was important later as well. So when I knew this was going to happen, and we knew there was some possibility of maybe a job coming out of this for one of, the, one of us at the end, um, it's really important to make the, a good impression from go when you have a situation like this. And this is true of your internship too. The very first moment you walk in the door, um, you are on display, right? You are, have an opportunity to make a really good impression. And so from the very first meeting, I think, where Kenya and I had with the, um, the folks at RICO, I was in my mind thinking, 
you never know, it's a possible job opportunity, make a good impression from the beginning. And that um, ties back to what you know about yourself and what you are good at in terms of displaying your skills, your personality, your passion. Think about that from this getting absorbed. So I did that. From the very first meeting, I tried to get a good impression. And I made a good impression at RICO. And I made sure to show them subsequently what I was capable of. And this is the point about making your own luck. So um, rather than just having, hey, let's chat about uh, your favorite English movies or coffee or stuff like that, I tried to give the RICO staff specific business skills like presentation, facilitation, negotiation, um, chairing a meeting in English, because I figured that's something that I could bring to the table because of my experience and my background. And so what happened through this whole process is it began basically as almost just an English lesson in some ways, English cafe, but it evolved more over the several weeks. And after week number four, somebody from HR at RICO was sitting in to observe my session. Oh, that sounds good. So up the volume on number three. And a few weeks later, that person's boss was sitting in to watch my session at the English Cafe. So I knew it's going in a good direction. And eventually, what happened is Rico asked me if I was interested in a job via our fine Globus folks here, of course, as well. And this is, so this is really, if you want to know how I got a job at Rico as a 46-year-old, non-Japanese-speaking, ex-government worker, this is basically it, right? Be very positive, show what you're capable of, know what you have to offer, and be very uh, forward about it, and they may come to you, rather than being um, sending out CVs endlessly to job search companies as well, right? This is the main message I have for you guys today. Really, really show them what you're capable of. Highlight your potential to the company. We'll get into some specific tips later for working in Japanese companies, but this, in a nutshell, is how I got the job at Rico. Right. They came to me, which makes me really happy as well. I never sent them a CV until they asked me um, to do so as well. So really, really, really cannot hammer this point enough. This makes a difference. And each of you will have to figure out yourselves um, how to take these three steps and how to show your potential employers, your internship opportunities, what you're capable of. And at the end, of course, I asked Rico, great, thank you for the job. I'm happy you hired me, but why? Again, 46-year-old, non-Japanese speaking, still, um, ex-government worker. Why did you hire me, right? This is really an important question because I'm not probably a typical new hire for RICO. One thing is they told me I showed a willingness to learn, to accept feedback, to teach others, but also I showed a willingness to learn through what I was showing them in this English cafe, but also through the fact I came to Japan to get my MBA at Globus. Now, coming to Japan to get MBA Globus sounds probably familiar to most of you because that's basically your story too, right? So this is a big plus. You really need to promote this when you're promoting yourself to companies. Willingness to learn. You have made an impressive leap to be in Japan to get your MBA here. That is a huge plus. Separate from what we learn here, the fact that you're willing to come to Japan and do this and get, um, make, improve yourself, big plus and selling yourself to Japanese companies. And of course, skills are important. So the background, my, you know, in my case, 20 years experience was important as well, but especially what we call portable skills, the fundamentals, communication skills, um, not marketing, but being able to really communicate, I think is really important. The things that are not too specific on your resume, they're, they're too job specific, but the skills you have, you can bring to any job. These kind of portable skills, they're transferable to any job, are also really important. Uh, in my case, also, they said strategy, management, strategy, project management, very generic skills that are useful in any job. And the last one, but the most important, is the cultural fit. Right. This is really where you have to do your homework as well. Because cultural, culture, as we know, it's a big term, it's a fuzzy term. How do you know, or what is the cultural fit between you and a potential company? Specifically, they said, they liked the fact I was quite positive in the sessions and during the interviews. Flexibility, again, you all have that. You have flexibility, you have agility from the fact that you're taking this MBA program and also creativity. So the point I'm trying to make here is that why did you hire me? This, these three things pretty much apply to all of you too. Right? By, the, by, by lieu of the fact that you are Globus students. Right? So really, really, Focus, of course, on your job search on your background and your skills and your um, CV. But don't forget about 
what you bring to a potential employer just by the fact that you are an MBA student in English in Tokyo. That is a, a lot of value to Japanese companies as well. Do not underestimate that. So um, my original uh, undergraduate degree, okay, I work in HR now, so naturally my original undergraduate degree is in astrophysics, right? Very logical jump there as well. So I like equations still. I'm still a scientist at heart. I love equations. So put everything together into what I call the equ job equation to get a job in Japan. Begin with your self-absorption. Begin with your personal mission statement, your kokuzashi. What are you passionate about and what do you want to do to change the world? Add the skills, the knowledge, the networks, the friendships you've met here. Take control. Raise your hand whenever you have any opportunity. I always talk about this. If you have an opportunity to get out and extend your networks, to meet new people, unless you have a very good reason, never say no to any opportunity like that. Always be willing to raise your hand and volunteer because you never know where it can lead you. In my case, English Cafe at Globus, through Globus, led to getting a career in HR at a Japanese company. I never would have made that connection up front, but it works out. You never know what can happen as well. And again, be, be good at self-promotion. Show them what you're capable of. Now, here's the challenging part, though, of course, right? Nihongo, right? Um, in my case, it was, it was not and is still not a huge obstacle. So I know this is a real hard issue for all of us, including myself. Um, and we'll talk about it a bit later based on some feedback from the other MBA students, the other alumni, but it's not a huge, I don't think it's a huge barrier. It's, of course, you're, if your Japanese ability like mine is not so high, it will limit you in terms of the job market, but as I've shown, it is not it's not, it's not a high hurdle to get over as well. And we'll talk about how to do that a bit later. And of course, add the equation to your background, your CV. Subtract your age, right? So um, in my case, you guys are safe. But if you are over 40, probably, it is going to really limit in, impact your likelihood of getting a job as well. Um, in any country, not just in Japan, right? This is true anywhere, right? So I mean, I had this, I had this and this going against me as well. But the last point in the equation, the last um, factor is the most important. It's basically your attitude and how you present yourself to the company. That's going to be a plus or minus. Just be positive. Show them what you're capable of. Show them what you can bring to the company. And this will really increase the likelihood of getting um, a job, uh, flipping your MBA into a career. And again, later we'll talk about some specifics some specific advice from your fellow Globus students and fellow alumni as well. And lastly, don't forget to be a good storyteller about yourself. Because when I had my interview, um, get into this first, if you are making a major career pivot, if you are rebranding yourself, really have a good story ready to explain about why. How does your past professional career lead you to Japan, lead you to Globus MBA, and how does that connect to the job that you're looking for? You have to have a really good narrative explaining that really well. So don't forget about this. Have a good story of yourself to tell out, because they're going to want to know, if you're not from Japan, why are you here? You know, we're happy, but why are you here? Now, why does it connect to your past life, and how does it connect to what you want to do at this company? And why this company as well? These are questions that I was asked I'm um, in my interview for Rico. I had answers ready. Very important, though, because you need to have this narrative about yourself, consistent story to tell them what you're offering and why you're here and what you can offer them. So I'd like to thank you all for your time so far on these general tips. And now we'll get ready for part two. Thank you.